If you think the UFC isn't biased, think again. The promotion, especially President Dana White, badly wanted Sean O'Malley to win at UFC 292. O'Malley isn't going to be a star. He is a star. Others just wanted Aljamain Sterling to lose. The question is, did the UFC set Aljamain Sterling up for failure? And if the answer is yes, then why did they do so? Let's check this conspiracy theory out first, and I quote, People aren't going to like hearing this, but the UFC kind of set up Aljo for failure. He had a fight with Cejudo three months ago and then had to make a quick turnaround against someone who had a whole year of preparation for him. Plus, he's a black man defending in Boston, of all places. This Twitter user does have a point, doesn't he? To dive deeper, let's wind the clock back a few months. Aljamain Sterling defended his bantamweight title by defeating Henry Cejudo via a razor-close split decision at UFC 288. Prior to that, Sterling was already suffering from neck issues, and a five-round war with the Olympic gold medalist didn't do him any favors. To make matters worse, the UFC virtually bullied him into accepting another fight just three months after his title defense against Sean O'Malley, who was given a year to recover from his war against Piotr Jan at UFC 280. Initially, Sterling refused to compete at UFC 292. He wanted more time to heal but the UFC wouldn't pay heed to his concerns. As he often does, Dana White used the media to put Sterling in a bad light, knowing that the former UFC bantamweight champ already had a controversial image thanks to his disqualification victory against Piotr Jan and his title defense against the shoulderless TJ Dillashaw. Aljo's one of those guys who just can't get out of his own way. Sterling was furious. Every single time they've asked me to fight, I've saddled up, put my nuts on the table, and I showed out every single time and I won. So it was just like, at what point do I get credit from the UFC, from, the, from Uncle Dana? Dana is super nice behind closed doors. But then he tells me, I can't get out of my own way. I'm like, what does that even mean? Just clarify what that means. Why would Dana provide clarifications to a guy who has zero star power to begin with? Make no mistake about it, Sterling was one of the better UFC bantamweight champions. He is the division's GOAT, according to Sean O'Malley, but the fight business is all about money at the end of the day. Fighters who make more money get to move the needle to a certain extent. And Sterling was never that guy, especially given his controversial title run. He didn't have a massive following, so he was easy to bully. Like, yes, he was, um, I believe, forcibly pushed into this slot, uh, borderline bullied into this slot, but they didn't hold a gun to his head. Fair enough, Anik. But why was the UFC so stubborn? Why did they not allow Sterling a couple more months to heal? Why do guys like Islam Akashev not get treated the same way? I think it's the inconsistency of, well, Makhachev hasn't fought in a year. Why are you rushing me to fight in two months? Like that, that's where I have a problem. I like, I like fairness and I like the transparency of knowing everybody's doing the same thing. Now we don't want to make any excuses on Sterling's behalf, but he looked a lot slower and sloppier than he usually is. And despite the fact that he lost to the better man at UFC 292, there was something wrong with him, and he was not 100% ready. Neither was O'Malley, but he still had a year to recover and heal his body for the biggest fight of his life. The UFC wanted O'Malley to reach the top of the food chain from the very beginning. He had an easier path to a title shot than others. But the difference is, he proved that he's the best in the world. He proved that he's an absolute star, and not many can walk that walk. The UFC loves him because of that. We broke the all-time gate record here. Bruce Springsteen just played here and did five million. We did over seven million. Okay, with the, with the big, the Boston Garden, where the biggest thing other than the craziest fucking sports town on earth, other than their team that plays here, we're the biggest thing that's ever been here. So what does that tell you about O'Malley? This is o O'Malley. This is also the biggest bantamweight championship fight ever on pay-per-view globally. It broke the record. Biggest Bantamweight championship fight ever. If you guys read between the lines, Dana White's saying that Sean O'Malley is a cash cow, and he's spot on. O'Malley has more than 3 million followers on Instagram. In comparison, Aljamain Sterling has just over half a million. Dominic Cruz, who's widely regarded as the greatest Bantamweight of all time, has a little over a million followers on the app. The trend on YouTube is the same. Sean O'Malley's Timbo Sugar show garners hundreds of thousands of views per episode, and UFC's official videos featuring him did massive numbers before and after UFC 292. Moreover, if you guys watched the fight, you could easily feel the energy in the arena. O'Malley was a massive favorite, and the crowd erupted after he dispatched Sterling to win the belt in the second round. 
Sugar Sean is one of the biggest stars in MMA today. And the fact that his stoppage win against Sterling reminded everybody of Conor McGregor's win over Jose Aldo is proof that he's slowly turning into the star he was always destined to be. He has the charisma of a champion, and his skill set is exceptionally underrated, even at this point in time. O'Malley is very, very good at what he does. And that's the reason why Dana White was over the moon with his victory at UFC 292. It's true that fight promoters have to pretend that they're fair, but it's impossible to keep your genuine human emotions and feelings hidden for long. Dana was happy because he knew O'Malley is way more profitable than Sterling would have ever been. Dana understands Sean O'Malley's star potential better than anyone else in the fight game. He's been in the game for as long as one can remember, so it's not difficult for him to recognize a legend when he sees one. The UFC sees a legend in Sean O'Malley, and they will do everything in their power to help him replace, or at least fill, Conor McGregor's void to a certain extent. Because, let's be honest, McGregor's days in the fight game are numbered. Maybe the Irishman will fight, maybe he'll not. O'Malley will continue to fight for the next four to five years at the top level, which means he's going to bring in millions of dollars for the company. And if he can land a lucrative boxing match with Gervonta Davis or Ryan Garcia, that would be the cherry on top. I mean, I don't really follow boxing, but I, I've heard, you know, heard of Javante Davis, and uh, I think he's undefeated. You know, I'm, I'm about to pay. I want to, I want to have crazy, massive fights. That shit gets me excited. I love that stuff. And uh, there's, I mean, there's no stars in the bantamweight division. Javante, you could consider him like almost a star, and uh, that, that's what gets me excited. Me versus Javante would be massive. T-Mobile or here. Just imagine the money that would be on the line if Sean O'Malley transitions to boxing. That would be huge. And most of us will tune in because O'Malley excites us. He has that aura about him. The way he carries himself. The way he's always locked in during walkouts. The way he puts his flashy skills on display in the octagon. He's a treat to watch. And deep down, even his naysayers know that. Sterling couldn't connect with fight fans the way O'Malley has. Funkmaster was a great champion, but his title run was marred with controversy. He won the belt by disqualification, and defended it by backpacking Jan for two rounds, and then by smothering a TJ Dillashaw with a fragile shoulder that popped as soon as the fight started. Sterling's victory against Tejudo was impressive, but his grappling heavy style didn't entertain UFC's consumers. That was his major problem. There's a simple rule in business. The customer is God. And if you can't please God, you're hellbound. The bottom line is, O'Malley had it easy, but he didn't take it for granted. He made the most of his opportunity and is pretty much unbeatable at this time. Still, let me put a few names in the mix who could ruin the party. Mareb Devalishvili, Corey Sandhagen, Marlon Vera, or Umar Nurmagomedov. Who puts the sugar show off the air? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. To stay up to date with the latest happenings in the world of MMA and boxing, please subscribe to Take Down MMA and turn on your notifications. Thank you for your continued love and support, and we'll see you in the next one.